So what you can start to build is a dynamic application within your VPC serving your customers. Now you should take your static content, for example your JavaScript, your object files and put them in S3. S3 is currently processing over one and a half million requests a second around the world. We are delivering that as a large scale. We recently introduced some new features in CloudFront for full HTTP verb support, so put and get. So suddenly you can put CloudFront in front of your dynamic web application. It can't cache that dynamic content, but it's going to be the thing that talks to your end customers, not your VPC. So suddenly, we have a globally distributed set of customers, we've got a globally distributed cache, and we get your single VPC running in a single Amazon region. And when you then face a distributed attack across that environment, CloudFront is going to be the first thing that those attackers hit, not your virtual private cloud. CloudFront will be dropping all of the malformed HTTP requests, for, a moment, uh, for example, and only allowing that legitimate traffic back to your VPC's origin servers. Amazon S3 is going to be serving up the static content. CloudFront will cache that content and deliver it back to customers very quickly. Route 53 is our DNS system, and if it's your DNS system, it's going to stay up and running no matter what. It's globally distributed. Amazon is running that. We are delivering and defending these large-scale endpoints, which means that your VPC, which means you, have less work to do. And what this means is that you can choose to outscale your attacker until your attacker's resources diminish. It can be very expensive to rent a botnet. It can be very cost-effective to use Amazon CloudFront and S3 and your VPC as a means of riding out those attacks. If you've got business and enterprise support, and you're under attack, call Amazon and see if we can help you. Now let's look at some of the other powerful features of Route 53 that we've introduced. It can load balance across multiple VPCs or multiple applications. You may choose to have these in different regions across the Amazon environment. But it can also now do health checking. So if you suffer an application failure within one region, Route 53 will notice that and start directing all your other traffic to the region that's still up. So you may have a still blip if you let, as you lose your application, but suddenly you're going to swing over to another Amazon region, you can sleep operating, suddenly you can take large scale failure and keep going. Route 53 makes DNS very easy and very reliable because DNS is a very complex service to run yourself. There are many important security features of DNS. Let Amazon do them. All you have to do is configure Route 53 and then start using it. Now, the main DNS attacks that happen on this planet are not because someone's hacked into a DNS service. They're typically because someone got a hold of the credentials used to configure the DNS service. So I always encourage people using Route 53 to use two-factor authentication and Amazon Identity and Access Management to control who can access your Route 53 configurations and who can change them. Always use two-factor authentication there. With CloudFront, there is very little that you need to do. Let Amazon do that work for you. If you're serving private content, you can also use signed requests so that you have a high degree of assurance over who you're delivering that content to, like you're paying customers for that media. I've spoken about how you can now post your information to your dynamic site through CloudFront. You may want to consider using SSL when you're doing that. CloudFront also produces logs. These will be very valuable to you from an intelligence point of view. Who is targeting you? Why? What might you want to do about it? You should always lock CloudFront to S3 buckets on a tight basis if you can where your origin sits. So your S3 origin server should be locked tightly down to CloudFront. And you can also always configure HTTPS only for downloads to CloudFront so that you create a full SSL environment for you and your customers. We also have a number of partners that can help you from good trusted security names like Trend, Riverbed, SafeNet, CypherCloud, Layer 7, Sophos, AlertLogic. All of these solutions and many more are on the AWS marketplace. You can use these build them into your own instances. Some of these are managed security services as well as SaaS-based solutions, as well as appliances for your virtual private cloud. 
So a combination of what Amazon does and what our partners does can help you build your own secure solutions. We publish a lot of information on security and compliance and best practice Amazon. We recently published a brand new security best practices white paper and also many other guides to help you with compliance and governance of this environment. These are all available publicly on our website for you to go and read as well as the audit and operational checklist that I spoke about earlier. You can also sign up for AWS support and get that help when you need it most as you're starting to use Amazon and where you grow. We have several different levels of support available for your organization with no long-term commitment for any of them, so you can simply pay by the month when you need it. You can also get training from Amazon. Either we can come and train you or you, we have also self-paced labs that you can use. And these things could then help you gain an AWS certification to demonstrate that you've got the skills, knowledge, and experience to design and build your own secure Amazon solutions to improve your credibility with your employer and your peers. You can do all of the disciplines. You can be a certified solutions architect, a developer, or sysops administrator on there. And with that, I'm finished. And thank you very much, everyone, for listening to me today. Thank you for attending. Unfortunately, we have no time for Q&A today. Any questions asked during the webinar, we will be answering offline. I look forward to our next security webinar and maybe speaking to some of you again.